Joining is Virginia Irwin, who's running for the New Hampshire House. She's running in the Sullivan District 9 seat. So Virginia, we were talking earlier, and we were sort of leaving with revenue and budget right. uh, expense issues. I, I do think the uh, budget is sort of going to be, well, it always is in the first year of the biennium. Uh, but I think this year it may be especially difficult uh, because of the uh, reductions from the Medicaid enhancement tax. Right. I mean, you're starting out with what? 80 to 100 million Give in take, the hole. considering the Medicaid enhancement tax is about 80 million, um, and we have to settle the mental health lawsuit, which is another 17 million. The Department of Transportation is starting out at a deficit for their operations. Um, so we are going to have a, a real challenge in the budget, and we have more needs um, that we really have an obligation to address. You know, we have to look at efficiencies. There's no question that we have to look at efficiencies. But when we cut too close to the bone, we really hurt services for New Hampshire citizens. In the O'Brien uh, legislature in 2010 and 12, they cut a program called CHINS, Children in Need of Supervision. They completely eliminated that resource, which helped school districts with kids who were truant. Now there is no um, support to make or help kids stay in school. That's an example of cutting too close to the bone. Um, we need to look at our revenue. Um, we cut the cigarette tax. I don't know why we would have done that. Um, I, I heard just the other day that New Hampshire is fourth highest in property tax, but fourth or third lowest in overall tax per capita. So we really need to take a look at our structure, at our revenue structure. Um, so the cigarette tax, that that expired, didn't it? Um, the cut? The cut. Uh, well, it was, a, it was triggered to um, if another state ro raised theirs and we would raise ours. Um, I don't remember what the, if the cut lasted through this biennium, though. That's what I'm, I was thinking in yeah. the back of my mind that that would have expired. But you're right, it, it was cut, and, and I don't know if it brought and in I the think, revenue that they thought it was going to. I don't think it did. I think that some of those fell short. Um, so, so, um, is casino gambling a revenue source? It is a revenue source. We had uh, marathon debates on casino gambling. Um, I supported it because I think it is a revenue source. I appreciate the fact that it opens other doors but I believe that a well-regulated casino in the southern tier, for sure, perhaps a second one in the northern tier, but no more, um, would be a way to get jobs, first of all. Um, and we, we are always talking about jobs, construction jobs, um, service industry jobs, um, the tangent jobs that go along with supporting that system, um, would be a source of revenue. You can debate how much. The conversation was 90 million. As you know, the governor built her budget around 90 million, um, which was premature. Um, I think we all thought that that was a little premature. Um, but there would be ongoing uh, fees and um, an annual licensing fee, and then the the byproducts, the rooms and meals tax, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. So I think it's a. I think we have to discuss it again. Do you think that should the budget should be predicated? on those revenues being in there? Or? No, I don't. I, d I think you can't, you can't build your budget around uh, hopes and dreams. Um, I think that we need to look at what we can afford, where we're going to say we can't afford, and I don't, I don't have a suggestion at this point. Um, and then if we can get the, if the will of the legislature is to pass a casino, we have now set up a regulatory system, which we did not have in place, mm -hmm. so we're moving in a more forward direction. Um, then perhaps we will um, be able to add that as a budgetary item. But So uh, you uh, you don't have the bill in front of you. No. But your bias, uh, I'm, I'm hearing, and tell me if I'm wrong, is generally in favor of one, maybe two casinos. Yes. Okay. Um, We've talked about all kinds of ways that we can expand gambling in this state. I'm not in favor of slots on every street corner. Um, or, you know, there's a lot of gambling that goes on in New Hampshire behind closed doors. Um, we've talked about, perhaps tongue-in-cheek, but we've talked about taxing that. You know, we all know, and everybody all knows, it's but nobody talks doors. about it. That's find. right. It's got to be uh, hard to find. But So we've got to have... Um, 
a legitimate yeah. program that we can work with. So we got about a minute left. Um, what's another issue that you would like to the legislature to address in the next session? Um, well, I think I mentioned before school building aid um, to give some relief to to uh, communities that are facing uh, enormous costs in renovation. Stevens High School is an example. I just was at the ribbon cutting for the Unity School. That was a long and painful process, and they came in under the wire and had to have special legislation in to order to get access. to get their forty percent exactly. And there are more and more and more schools around the state that are crumbling. And that we need to be able to help them. So, and, and is that was that part of a downshifting of costs? Was it was eliminated in the budget? Um, it was just, you know, you, you we are going to give you your portion. So what has happened is, communities have not done anything. I mean, they've done maintenance certainly, but they can't afford the hundred percent that it costs to build new schools. So what it means is looking at a new model. Um, we're not all going to be sitting in buildings, perhaps. So. Well, and we'll save that for a later conversation. Great. 